Hey there, I'm Abby Huntsman. Welcome to HuffPost Live. Since the convention, Romney has struggled to gain traction in the polls. According to the latest Gallup poll, Romney is trailing Obama by six points, causing many Mormons around the country to feel uneasy about his ability to pull off a win in November. So some members of the Mormon community have planned a day to fast and pray for Romney in hopes that it will help him in the debates and polls. Uh, is this a sign that the LDS Church may be more involved than they lead on? Or is this just a group of voters doing what they believe will help their chosen candidate? Joining me to discuss the role of the Mormon Church in the 2012 elections is Elisa Sutton, author of Diary of a Single Mormon Female, McKay Coppins, a reporter for BuzzFeed Politics who first reported on the fast, Rebecca Lane, editor of The Universe, the BYU student newspaper, Sue Emmett, president of the Ex-Mormon Foundation and great-great-granddaughter of Brigham Young, and last but not least, Tiffany Stanley, managing editor of the online journal Religion and Politics, and of course, my colleague Mark Lamont Hill, who we had, we had so I'm many... I was, I was praying for this segment to go well. Thank you. Go ahead. Well, good, because we, we're already off to a good start. <laughs> were you part of this email chain and, you know, we're feeling a little bit left out? How did you find out this was going on? Uh, no, I, I didn't receive it as somebody who should uh, be participating. Uh, but I got, it was passed along to me by two different people uh, who had had it sent to them. And, and, you know, I started asking around on Facebook and Twitter and, and pretty quickly realized that this was a, a widespread thing that uh, Mormons in Colorado, Nevada, Utah, and California, at least, uh, had had received this email. So it, it's uh, it, it's something that Mormons are very committed to. Not not every Mormon, obviously, but these are conservative Romney supporters, and they think that their spiritual day of fasting and prayer could actually help Romney. And and uh, you know, heaven knows he needs it right now. It's very typical for Mormons to to uh, for, uh, for things that they feel very importantly about to fast, not only for their personal lives, but uh, for other people in times of need. It's uh, been very traditional in the church to do that. What is the fascination? Is it the fact that they just don't know a whole lot about it? Um, I'd love to get your take, Rebecca, as, as the uh, editor of the BYU paper. What's the feeling on the ground at a place like BYU with uh, the nominee being Mormon, is there some sort of pressure that you know they, they feel like they have to support Romney? As an editor, I've asked around, I look into it all the time, and people don't feel pressure about voting for Romney. The church's stance is to stay neutral and just to be active in the political process. So um, students are aware of the attention that they have with Mitt Romney being Mormon and going for president, and especially here at BYU, as Mitt Romney is an alumnus, but the attention isn't necessarily um, what is there is a concern for us or anything different because a lot of these students have grown up outside of Utah where they are a minority, so they're used to the attention. I think that the Mormon Church is probably getting an unfair rap for this. I think that it's a little unusual for, for groups to fast um, for a candidate. Um, but no, it's not really too unusual for religion, though, to rally behind a cause or behind a candidate. We saw it, it, it four cause. years ago, there were a number of, of churches, the Baptist church, that, that rallied behind Obama at the time. Right. No, and I, I was going to say, I think the closest comparison is President Obama. One difference, though, is that you saw individual churches, like you might see the church up the street or a big church in, in Chicago or, or Los Angeles or Philadelphia, pray for President Obama or pray for a victory. I think the difference is... When, when, when LDS does it, it seems as if it's an entire institution doing it as opposed to an individual body of people who make a decision. Why not just write a beautiful speech about what Mormon means to him, why people should not be concerned, and kind of lay out um, really what it's all about? Well, I think that Romney actually tried to do that the last time he ran for president. You know, in his 2008 campaign, he gave a speech that was definitely modeled on JFK's speech to the Houston Ministerial Alliance that you know, was really trying to calm the fears whether the Pope or the Catholic Church would have any impact on his presidency. And basically his answer was no, you know, that's my church, I'm running as a president, not as the Catholic president. Well, Romney tried that same strategy in 2008 and it frankly kind of fell flat. We are a lot like other people. We do have some beliefs that are unique, but you know, we don't have horns. We <laughs> there is society and we're, we're not that weird. Well, and I, I just want to say that. We're not I that weird. I can't help it. No, but, but, but then, see, that's the problem. I guess there are certain things that I think American people ultimately, if they subjected it to scrutiny, would think were weird. And, and I, I think that's something we have to come to terms with. That doesn't mean it's wrong or bad, but if, 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 the, if the American people were to hear about 
uh, the planet, do you pronounce it Kolob, Kolob? How do you pronounce it? Mikhail. Kolob. Kolob. They might think that's weird. Now, I'm not saying it's any more weird than any other Christian dogmas, but because most people believe the other stuff, they, they, they're, they're inclined to think that that's kind of a weird departure from Christian, Christianity. When people hear about the undergarments, they think that's weird. They just do.